Did you think that being tall, jacked, or genetically gifted was a health advantage? Well, that's a lie. In fact, people with the most height, muscle, or early growth hormone spikes often age faster and die younger. So what got you to your physical peak might be the same thing dragging you to an earlier grave. I'm a certified longevity coach and with cancer in my family tree. So this isn't just research, it's literally self-defense. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through why size really does matter when it comes to aging, how both too much growth and too little can shape your lifespan, what your height says about longevity, and how to actually tweak hormone levels even as an adult. Now, pro basketball players may dominate the court, but off the court, their size comes with a cost. From early on, we're taught to worship size, tall, built, wide as a fridge, but bigger bodies don't just carry more lean tissue. They carry more metabolic stress, which means more cells replicate unchecked, more inflammation, and more wear and tear, especially on the heart. Studies have consistently shown that the tallest individuals in a population often have shorter lifespans than their more moderately sized peers. One major reason, growth hormone and its partner in crime, IGF-1. These two drive rapid growth in childhood and adolescence, but that early advantage might be a ticking time bomb. Take elite basketball players, towering in height, peak fitness, full access to medicine, and yet, when researchers tracked their lifespans, many of them died younger than expected. Their size, driven by elevated growth hormone exposure during development, correlated with a higher risk of heart disease and cancer, and this is even if they stayed active. So yeah, being huge may make you a legend on the court. But metabolically speaking, it's like driving a souped up sports car in a pothole ridden city. But what happens on the flip side? What about the people who don't get that growth hormone surge and end up smaller, lighter, and living longer? Well, let's head over to Ecuador for that answer. So in a tiny community in Ecuador, there's a group of people with a rare condition, growth hormone deficiency, also known as GHD, which makes them shorter, smaller, and have dramatically lower levels of IGF-1. On paper, it sounds like a disadvantage, but when it comes to longevity and disease resistance, they're outliving expectations. These individuals don't just live long, they practically ghost two of the biggest killers on the planet, cancer, and diabetes. Why? Because with less IGF-1 signaling, their cells divide less aggressively, which means fewer mutations, less tumor growth, and better metabolic control. Also, multiple studies have tracked these Ecuadorian populations for decades, and despite being more vulnerable, physically shorter in stature, lower muscle mass, they've shown an astonishing resistance to chronic disease. One paper even found zero cases of cancer in the population being studied. Zero. So while most people are trying to crank up growth hormone for aesthetics, these folks, just by having lower baseline growth switch, are outliving, outlasting, and outsurviving. No injections, nothing fancy, just your chemistry playing the long game. But that's not the full story, because it's not just about rare genetic mutations in isolated towns. These size longevity paradox shows up all around us, even in your neighborhood dog park. Now, across almost every species, including humans, the bigger you are, the faster you burn out. From Great Danes to heavyweight athletes, breaking down is a matter of when, not if. And scientists have observed that smaller individuals within a species tend to live longer than their larger peers. Think about it. A Chihuahua can live nearly twice as long as a Great Dane. And the same rule applies to humans. In multiple studies, like the one done on US veterans, men under 5'6 lived up to six years longer than those that are six feet tall. Lighter weight was linked to longer life. These weren't malnourished people. They were just smaller builds with lower lifelong exposure to growth promoting hormones. So if you've always felt small, congratulations. You might be playing the long game without even realizing it. It's not a curse, but it's a reminder that more mass means more moving parts and more parts that can fail. Now this next part might change your thinking entirely because it's not just about how big you are, it's about what kind of fuel your body runs on and whether that fuel is setting your system up for success or straight up failure. Now, most of us think IGF-1 is the holy grail for muscle, youth, and performance. And yeah, it plays a huge role in development, but high levels of this growth hormone later in life, that's where things start to go sideways. IGF-1, also known as insulin light growth factor one, is a hormone that's cranked up during puberty to support height, bone density, and muscle growth. But those same growth promoting effects are a double-edged sword. They're also linked to increased cancer risk, cardiovascular disease, and overall mortality. But here's the twist. While you can't rewind your growth years, you can still modulate IGF-1 
as an adult. And the way you eat, you train, and you recover, that's the switchboard for your longevity. So now that we know that high IGF when later in life can backfire, how do you actually keep it in check without sacrificing strength or energy? The answer isn't to tank your hormones. It's about finding your personal longevity zone where your muscle stays strong, your brain stays sharp, and that overactive growth signal stays quiet. Sure, IGF-1 naturally trends downward with age, but your daily habits still have the power to bend that curve in the wrong direction. If you're carrying around excess body fat, pounding high protein meals nonstop, and spiking your blood sugar all day, you're basically telling your body to stay in go mode. And that's exactly what we're trying to tone down. So how do you actually bring your IGF-1 levels into the longevity zone without tanking your strength or muscle mass? It starts with body composition. Carrying too much body fat ramps up insulin resistance, which keeps IGF-1 levels elevated in ways that can accelerate aging, not performance. But the goal isn't to starve yourself lean either. It's about finding that lean but resilient zone where your body runs efficiently without overstimulation. Then there's protein. Most people think more is better, but when it comes to IGF-1, more can mean more growth signals, which sounds great in your 20s, but becomes risky later in life. Moderate protein intake, enough to build and repair, but not enough to flip your body into overdrive is usually the sweet spot. Now layer in timing. Time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting helps your body shift out of consistent growth mode and into maintenance and repair. You're not giving up food. You're giving your system room to breathe. And no, it doesn't mean you'll lose muscle. In fact, strength training keeps your muscle and bone density intact, even when IGF-1 trends lower. Finally, watch your blood sugar. High insulin from too many spikes doesn't just affect energy. It's like shouting at your IGF-1 receptors to stay switched on. Keeping your glucose steady through smart food choices and regular movement helps lower that background noise so your body can prioritize repair over relentless growth. Your goal isn't to hit one magic number. It's to train your body to cycle between growth and recovery. When IGF-1 stays in moderate zone, you hold on to muscle, protect your brain, and keep inflammation at bay. It's not about extremes. It's about rhythm. Think dimmer switch, not an on and off button. Here's the bottom line. Bigger isn't always better, whether it's height, muscle mass, or hormones like IGF-1. Chasing more doesn't always mean you're chasing health. Sometimes it's a shortcut to the grave. So if this video flipped the way you think about growth and longevity, hit that subscribe button and let me know where your IGF-1 stands, or if you ever thought about testing it. Till next time.